Hello, this is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling Applied Multivariate Analysis. And we're in Chapter 3 part of this playlist, which I'm calling Characterizing Multivariate Data. <clears throat> and let's jump right into our topic for today, which is the population cor correlation matrix in the multivariate setting. So the population correlation matrix is denoted by capital P, <clears throat> and it consists of all the correlations between the variables. Notice the ones down the diagonal, which, you know, is a correlation of, you know, say variable one with variable one. Well, that's perfect correlation. They're aligned. <clears throat> and now um, the, you know, each correlation or correlation is, is defined as the covariance divided by the product of the standard deviations. That is the definition. And the off diagonals are equal so row two one is the same as row one two and etc so they're it's it's a symmetric matrix the relationship with the covariance matrix sigma so since covariance is part of the definition of correlation it's not surprising that sigma plays a part in the definition so if we create a diagonal matrix called D sub sigma, which is just the, you know, the variances for each variable down the diagonal, we can create a square root matrix of it, which just take the square root of all the diagonal elements. So it's the uh, standard deviations of each variable. And then the inverse of a diagonal matrix, so the inverse of the square root matrix is just one over those diagonal entries which can be thought of as this and easily shown that these two matrices are inverse of each other they equal the identity matrix so rho or p capital p which is the correlation matrix can be thought of as this matrix product it's the inverse of the square root matrix of d times sigma which is the covariance matrix times the inverse of the square root matrix and and more explicitly they're defined like this so remember when you multiply a matrix times a diagonal element then this gets put on each row you know that respective and then when and then when you right multiply by a diagonal element then that gets put on each column and so that matrix product does create this correlation matrix now the sample correlation matrix we denote by R, it's a P by P matrix, and it has the sample correlations for each, uh, for each, you know, two variables. So R21 is a sample correlation for variable one, two and variable one, and R12 is a sample correlation for, between variable one and variable two. They are equal, so this is a symmetric matrix. <clears throat> There's ones down the diagonal because each variable is perfectly correlated with itself. Um, here's the formula for RK. It's the sample correlation divided by the product of the standard deviations of those variables. It is symmetric. Now the relationship with the sample covariance matrix S and the sample correlation matrix is very similar to in the population setting. We create a diagonal element, D. We create it you know, where the sample variances are down the diagonal. We create a square root matrix of it, which is a, a diagonal matrix with the standard deviations down the diagonal. And then its inverse is just 1 over S, which can be you know, is this. They are inverses of each other. So R can be thought of as you know, the inverse of the square root matrix times S, which is the sample covariance matrix times the inverse of the square root matrix. And, and more explicitly, it's this. So, and then when you do this matrix product, it creates the sample uh, correlations. Now, from the previous formula, we also get one. So if we look at this formula here, R equals, you know, this, if we left multiply by the square root matrix and right multiply by the square root matrix, we get a formula for just S. So the sample 
covariance matrix can be thought of as a function of the sample correlation matrix. Now, let's uh, illustrate this in R. Now, there's a built-in data set called MT cars, and the, its description is the Motor Trend Car Road Test. So the data was extracted from the 1974 Motor Trend U.S. Magazine and comprises of fuel consumption and 10 aspects of automobile design and performance for 32 automobiles. And these were the 1973 and 74 models. So the variable names like MPG, that stands for miles per gallon. We have number of cylinders, displacement of the, uh, the pistons, the horse, gross horsepower, the rear axle ratio, the weight of the vehicle, how fast it goes in a quarter mile, the engine shape is a V-shaped or straight. That has to do with the design of the engine. Um, the is it the automatic transmission or manual? The number of forward gears and the number of carburetors used. So that's a very brief description of that data set. So we attach the data set using the data command. The STR stands for structure. So if you want to look at the structure of an object, this is how you do it. Notice it's a data frame. There's 32 observations, 11 variables, and it briefly gives you a description of each of the variables. They're all considered numeric, even though some of them would probably be better described as categoric. So V and S, is it V-shaped or straight? You know, it's a 0, 1, you know values but really it's categoric so uh, the head function lists the six uh, rows of whatever you're printing and so this is some of the actual data values um, the pairs command um, what that does now I, I only grab columns one three through seven and 11 because they're more continuous like than the other variables. And so here is a plot of the pairs. What it does is it, it provides a pairwise plot for each between the variables. So the displacement in miles per gallon, you can see that it's negatively correlated. There's a negative relationship here. Horsepower and, and displacement, there's positive weight and displacement. And you can kind of get a quick overview of the pairwise relationships between each of these variables. So now to calculate the mean vector. Now, and I'm only going to grab the columns which are sort of continuous like. And you just say column means, and it creates the means for each of these columns. Now I round it to two decimals, so it fits nicely on the screen. And so there's the sample mean vector. Now to create a sample covariance matrix, you can use the function COV, and then the data frame, and I only grab the columns which are continuous like. I round it to two decimals, so it fits on the screen. And that's it. The covariance between miles per gallon and miles per gallon is 36. Well, that's the variance of that variable. Um, you could also use VAR. When you take the variance of a matrix or a vector, it creates a covariance matrix. And just to show you, these are exactly equivalent. You know, they're the same. To create a sample correlation matrix, you use the function core, C-O-R, and then you enter your data uh, data frame, your data matrix. And I round it to two decimal places so it fits on the screen. And this is it. Notice that I said the correlation between displacement and miles per gallon was negative relationship, and the correlation is negative 0.58, and that's what we observed. Uh, displacement and horsepower, there was a positive relationship, and it's point seven, the sample correlation is 0.79. Okay, well, this is all I have for this video.
Hopefully you enjoyed that. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.